Hi, this is Sadhu Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Insight. And today we have with us Robert Schwild. Uh, welcome to the show. Today VMware is going to announce uh, vSphere 7, if I'm not wrong. So first of all, <laughs> so first of all, uh, tell a bit about, you know, looking at the previous version, uh, what is the significance of it? How much of the cloud native technologies or open source technologies or Kubernetes that will be there? Just give us a big, you know, overall picture of uh, V7. Yeah, so this release for VMware is a major release. It's the first time they've, the first release they've had in quite a while. They've been in the six, six range for uh, a number of years. And so with this release, they're really jumping into a very different uh, type of product, frankly. I mean, it's still virtualization is their core, but they, they've really embraced Kubernetes down to a level that I don't think anybody had really expected just a couple of years ago. And so when you look at what VMware is going to stand for with this release, it's not going to be just about virtualization. It's much more focused on you know a complete data center infrastructure platform uh, where Kubernetes is a first class citizen. And so you know, this is something that I think the industry as a whole has been looking for. Uh, so far, the only other industry player with, with real on-premises Kubernetes at this scale has been Red Hat. And so it's a, it's a really significant component for, for what's coming out in, in, in this, not just turning the knobs, so to speak, on virtualization, but really rethinking what that core platform is about. How much you know, the acquisition of Haptio or Bitnami would contribute yeah. to this release? So, uh, you know, there's, there's actually a lot of acquisition activity that went into VMware in the last year. Heptio is one. Pivotal uh, is also, yes. you know, had moved a lot of Kubernetes capabilities over. Um, but my understanding on this is that there's actually a lot of core engineering that was just going on inside of VMware towards this. So while, you know, these acquisitions are really important, the, the amount of rethinking and, you know, re-engineering in the platform has been very significant uh, based on what I've heard in industry. And so that means that, you know, this isn't just about one adding, bolting on one or two other acquisitions or bringing things in. It really is a, a rethinking, what they call Project Pacific, if you've been tracking VMware, um, is, is really this core infrastructure component that really looks at how, how VMware is structured. It has been uh, you know major release after a long time. Uh, can you talk about some of the major highlights that are there, which you know, like make sense for either the customers or the ecosystems? So some of these things are just you know coming out with the announcement, um, and you know the things that that I've been looking forward to seeing is really a much tighter integration within their stack. So in version six, a lot of very core infrastructure concepts, the storage capabilities with vSAN, the networking capabilities with NSX. Um, and then, of course, all these Kubernetes pieces we've been talking about were really added into the product from that perspective. And what we should see with V7 is a much more integrated system. So when you're looking at all of these pieces and parts, they're going to actually be coming in as an integrated unit. Uh, and I think that's a significant benefit. That, that means that we're not we're talking about architectures that were designed to have software defined networking and software defined storage as first class citizens in that architecture. Um, and that's that's really a big deal. I think the flip side of that a little bit is that that means that they they won't be as optional. So we have a lot of people who have been you know using ESX as just a virtualization layer, and you know moving them deeper into the platform means that you're going to have to embed those technologies more, um, potentially pay for them too. So you know with great benefits comes additional licensing. And that that I haven't seen the details on the licensing yet for VMware, but I would expect to see that you know when you build what they call the software defined data center SDDC, those those capabilities are going to be more interconnected now than they have been in the past. Why is Kubernetes so critical to this release? You know, especially if you look at VMware's whole history. Kubernetes is really you know cut across the bow of VMware. A lot of time, you know, in the first couple of years, it was really considered a major threat for VMware. Containerization was considered an alternative for virtualization. Um, it hasn't quite worked out that way. People still use VMs quite a bit with containers, but it, it's always been a secondary product. So the idea that if I wanted to do Kubernetes, I had to get something in addition to VMware, or I had to go to Pivotal instead of VMware, or Red Hat instead of VMware, 
um, really meant that you didn't have a complete stack. Um, Red Hat has been very powerful in this by having a complete stack for their infrastructure um, with OpenShift. And you know that meant that you were completely in that family. And I think VMware sees that as an important thing. You know, Kubernetes, in some cases, and I, I do think there's a component here where people will use Kubernetes without traditional virtualization and VMware will be able to embrace that fully. Um, but it's also a question of having a complete end-to-end -end stack, which customers have, have really been looking for inside of the, the enterprise sales process. Uh, and I don't think we should underestimate that, even if you're still using virtualization, having all the pieces and parts together is a big deal. Kubernetes is becoming the way most people want to interact with infrastructure. And so that is the, the API of choice today. Um, and pulling that into something like vSphere uh, where it's the you know this overarching piece means that people who are already trained in the VMware tool chains have a way to interact with v with Kubernetes. Uh, that market saturation, that user base, shouldn't be underestimated. It's a significant uh, part for enterprise users. I mean, we have talked a lot about uh, Kubernetes. You have also touched upon yeah. other components, but can you talk about what else is there in this release? Some of the core components. Yeah, so I mean, the core components are, are back to things that, that VMware has really been doing well. Uh, you know, storage and networking have, have long been critical pieces. And so bringing all that together and really integrating tightly is a major component. Um, and one of the things that's worth noting here is that when we talk about VMware, um, you know, people typically think on premises, enterprise, or self managed capabilities, they've, they've made a lot of pushes into cloud infrastructure and they're running as a virtualization system inside of other clouds, right? Amazon, Google, Microsoft, IBM, all, all have footprints for VMware. Um, and so these storage and networking capabilities are essential for hybrid. So when we look at, they have an acquisition on the uh, SD-WAN side also. So when we start looking at you know, the footprint for VMware, it's not just about virtualizing something or running data center in one location. They're, they've really, through these networking and storage techniques, managed to get real distributed infrastructure, real hybrid infrastructure. Um, you know, I've been, I've been hearing rumors about vMotion, uh, public comments that, that, that experts, V experts have been making about, you know, doing VM migrations live across cloud boundaries. Um, crazy impressive stuff. Uh, and those are the types of things that are enabled by having these tighter integrations. So what I would expect to see is a product that's much better um, positioned for hybrid cloud infrastructure and, and sort of breaks the boundaries of single data center control like, like we'd seen in version six. Yeah, and that brings me to the question regarding AWS. You know, we talked about Outpost yeah. recently. Uh, how, how does, you know, uh, I mean, when you look at AWS versus VMware, where do you think this release, you know, kind of fits in? Uh, do they have any chance against AWS or ADS has any chance against VMware? <laughs> AWS is without a doubt the, the, big, <laughs> the big player in, in these conversations and questions. And there are, you know, there is an Outpost version coming that is that has VMware integrated into it. Um, and VMware is in Amazon. However, I, I really do think that there are things that are operating in parallel here. Having a real strong Kubernetes capability built into VMware allows VMware to have some competitive positioning against the major cloud players and their Kubernetes offerings. Um, and that's a significant component. If you're trying to create a single way that you interact with Kubernetes, uh, being able to do it on-premises and cloud through a VMware uh, control plan is a very big deal. And so this is a place where I think that when we look at V7, that the hybriding capabilities or the multi-cloud capabilities, um, I, I haven't seen as much coming from that position yet, but it positions them for it. Just like we, we saw six in market for a long time and it was the foundation for things that they built. I expect seven to be the foundation for a lot of what they build going forward, right? Now that Kubernetes is, is baked in, they can start building Kubernetes services in a much more deeply integrated way uh, and pulling those into the vSphere control panel. So it, it really does create, you know, uh, I hate the phrase single pane of glass, but it, it is creating a single pane of glass for some of these platforms, um, which I don't want to underestimate the reconciliation for administrators to be able to go to a tool that they're used to using both for infrastructure administration through VMs and 
container administration f through Kubernetes. Um, you know, those those shouldn't be separate control planes uh, for for administrators, and that's you know, I, I really feel like this is where VMware is going. As you mentioned, you know, there's you know, it, it has been a long time since the previous release, uh, so there are a lot of new components there. You know, Kubernetes is also there. So I have two questions. One is that you know, how hard will it be for you know existing customers who are on vSphere six? At the same time, new customers who do want to kind of you know adopt it, how challenging it's going to be. Yeah, that's you know one of the challenges with any of these pro of these platforms, especially major migrations, um, is the amount of lift and change and, and components for that. So, people looking at their current infrastructure, you know, do need to understand how the new system works, how it's different. Um, it might require additional infrastructure to be purchased, especially if you're two revs back and you're looking at version five. Um, you know, go, you know, leapfrogging to seven is might might be a big lift. So, people should should eva you know review, evaluate, test, uh, and pilot the infrastructure. Uh, you know, there are new concepts that are going to come out in this. The Kubernetes is going to be new to a lot of the administrators, and so, you know, I wouldn't expect people to just push button and upgrade from six to seven. Uh, they need to think through think it through a little bit more carefully. I I don't have a list of of changes or breaking changes or concerns at this point. We still have to evaluate and test. Um, Rackend has been doing some some advanced check and test and things like that and looking at what those patterns are. Um, today, you know, I would treat them as as two separate products as you go through the the upgrade process and review and look at what seven is going to bring you. Um, and we've also been talking to companies that want to plan a very aggressive migration schedules and, and rebuild their estates to, to leverage seven as fast as they possibly can. Um, in a lot of cases, those are those are what I would call lily pad migrations rather than um, upgrade in place migrations. Uh, and it'll take time to actually get all the, the process and workflow through. Right. And how do you uh, rack and, you know, kind of help these customers? I'm curious. Uh, what are the stages they are in or... Uh, where do you enter the picture, or you just work with those clients throughout the cycle, life cycle? Yeah, Rackend is really a software platform that's underneath uh, VMware, and so we help customers install VMware uh, from the bare metal up, you know, RAID and BIOS configuration, automation uh, components like that. And so from our perspective, we're really helping uh, customers jump into VMware in a, in a much faster very predictable way, and in, in a lot of cases, help reset environments and make them available for installs. Um, we've been helping customers shorten times for installs from uh, months down to hours or minutes uh, in some cases. So uh, we see VMware and, and platforms like VMware is very powerful. Uh, the ability to bring Kubernetes in to these discussions and be able to have the same install process that we're using for VMware vCenter um, and v VCF Virtual Cloud Foundation to VMware Cloud Foundation um, into a Kubernetes process, I think is incredibly powerful um, and you know, really helps accelerate customers' journey from that perspective. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I do you know, want, from Rackend's perspective, the hardware is still the hardware and you still have to do the conformance and patching and migrations and upgrades and building the network topologies. And a lot of those things um, are still, they're hard. And that's what Rackend helps customers do. Um, we're excited to have partners like VMware who are really bringing you know powerful platforms on top of that, um, and for us that that's you know really changing the economics for running a data center just by making it faster, easier, and and more secure to make that happen. Rob, thank you for for talking about vSphere Seven, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, for our next episode. Uh, thank you. Excellent swap. Thank you. We're excited about uh, these new announcements. It's a big deal.